Hi, my name is Jo, and I'll be taking you through a spinal release practice. My particular training and approach is a trauma-informed and mental health aware approach. So you might notice as we move through the practice that my language is quite invitational and that there is a real emphasis on choice making. This is to support you to move into a state of agency with your own body and your own practice. To begin, you're really welcome to feel your way into a comfortable starting shape. That might be seated if you like to begin your practice in a meditation, or you might be coming down onto your spine. If you are coming into a seat or down onto your spine and you have a pillow handy, perhaps sliding something underneath your hips or your head, depending on where it is that you're arriving today. And we'll just take a couple of moments before we start the practice, just to arrive here in this space at this time. And as you begin the journey towards arriving, you might check in with your physical body and see if there's a way that you can be five to 10% more comfortable where you are. And this might mean making adjustments to the shape of your body. It might mean a roll of the shoulders, an unclenching of your jaw, or a softening of the muscles around your eyes. You're welcome to have your eyes open or closed. And to make any other adjustments that support you to be here in this moment. Perhaps beginning by getting a sense of the places where your body is in contact with the surface below you. And feeling into the heaviness and the density of your bones. And if possible, you might allow yourself to become even heavier here. Like you're dropping down into the embrace of the earth. And from here, you might welcome a little more awareness to your breath. Feeling the breath moving in and moving out of your body. And if it's supportive, the option to take a sighing breath full breath in through the nose and letting all the breath soften out as you exhale. Arriving here. And if there's anything that rises up to the surface, any feeling or thought, sensation that wants to be known. You might take a moment just to honour your experience. And whatever is arising as okay and welcome.
And if you'd like to stay with that practice a little longer, know that you're welcome to. And when you are feeling ready to move towards the first gesture of our practice, we'll begin by lying all the way down on our spines. And for this first part of the practice, you can pop all of your props to one side so we won't need them just yet. And coming all the way down onto your back. And as you do come down, you might take a big stretch of your arms and your legs. And see if you can find some length through your body. And then from here, stepping your feet up onto your mat so that they come to the edges of the mat, the soles of the feet, the heels and the toes, all connecting near the outer edges of your mat. And allowing your knees to knock into centre. If you like, you could take your hands to your lower belly. And about three conscious breaths here. Inviting your spine to get a little heavier. And your pelvis to get heavier. From here, the option to take your arms wide to the sides or maybe high up overhead. And the next time that you exhale, allowing your knees to roll to one side. And feeling the bones of your pelvis and your feet rolling against the earth. Pressing down through the soles of your feet and the bones of your pelvis to bring your knees back up towards centre. Before heading over to the other side, using the feet and the bones of the hips and the pelvis. And moving side to side in this way, grounding down through your bones. Creating stability through the soles of the feet and the pelvic halves rolling side to side. And you might experiment a little with anchoring down through the sacrum, through the big toes, the heels, and different parts of your bone structure as you move side to side. It's just about two more breaths if you are moving in this way. And so we're just waking up the pelvis, waking up the lower spine, a bit of gentle rocking and swaying as we begin. And after you've moved side to side, we start to bring ourselves back towards centre. Allowing your knees to knock in and the bones to soften. And taking your knees towards your chest in Apanasana, wrapping arms around shins. And you might massage into your lower back here. And that could be some circles. Might be some swaying movements. We're taking it really slow in this practice. And sometimes that can feel soothing, and other times it can feel challenging. And maybe checking in to see how things are feeling and moving for you today. Then when you're ready, extending one leg out in front of you and keeping a hold of your opposite knee. With the option to take that knee across your body into a twist. And you might even land that knee on a cushion or a block. And taking a full breath in and a soft breath out. Maybe noticing sensations through your spine, 
as you're twisting today. Knowing that you're always in charge of the depth of the movements and the shapes that you make. You've been twisting to one direction. Just whenever you're ready, starting to come back up through center. And taking both knees in towards your chest again. Before switching over to your opposite side. And just in your own timing, it's about five breaths as you twist. Making any adjustments with your hips and your arms along the way. Maybe noticing your breath. The feeling of your body moving with your breath. And then when you are ready, starting to move your way back to center. And taking your knees towards your chest one more time for Adhanasana. If you like to rock and roll along your spine, you might take your arms underneath your legs and rock and roll your way up towards seated. Another option could be to roll to one side, using your arms to press your way up. And the next shape we'll be feeling into is a child's form or balasana. So you might be taking your knees a little wider and your hands out in front of you as you feel into this gesture of the lasana. Just about five breaths here. And maybe tracing the outline or the sensation with the tops of your feet, with your shin bones, your knees, the underneath of your arms and your palms as these parts of your body make contact with the earth. And if your forehead is touching the ground, you might rock your head side to side and kind of wobble or shimmer through the spine here. And then at any point that you feel ready, Starting to make your way up to tabletop, all fours, with hands under your shoulders and knees under your hips. With any kind of adjustments here that support you to anchor down through the bones of your body. And in the same way that we woke up the sacrum and the pelvis, the invitation here to just wobble the hip side to side so that the heads of the femurs roll in the pelvic heart. And swaying your pelvis to one side and then the other side. And just checking in to see what the sensation is like as you sway your hips side to side. And this might be the gesture that you stay with. Another option is to begin making different spinal movements. And these can be any kind of shapes. They might be circles or arches. Inviting movement to flow through your spine and particularly the areas that may not receive as much movement throughout the course of an average day. So these movements might look snake-like, they might be more static, there might be circles. And taking a few more breaths, just to feel into your own spine today. Knowing that there's no right or wrong way to do any of these movements. the way that you choose to move your body. And whenever you're ready, the next gesture 
is to take your left hand into the center of your mat, just a little further forward than you might have previously had your hand, and to reach your right arm up to the sky for a twist. There's an option to add in a couple of circles with your arm. So now we're rolling the head of the arm in the shoulder. And so the shoulder girdle might click or crunch a little as we invite more movement and lubrication into the joints. You could continue with circles or another option is to take your hands behind your head and then to take your right elbow towards your inner left elbow crease. Maybe repeating that a couple of times. So twisting elbow to elbow. And the last gesture here, if you'd like to come along with the sound of my voice, is to reach that right arm up to the sky, really anchoring down through your left palm for buoyancy. And then reaching that right arm through as you thread the needle. Just about three breaths here. And then starting to release your way out of the shape any kind of swiveling or movement of the hips and the shoulders as we invite that energy to flow through the body now. And then as you're ready, you could take this onto your opposite side. So your right hand into the center and your left arm reaching up. An option to take a few circles knowing that these can be as big or small as you'd like to. And then if you're working with an injury or a different range of motion in your body, that you're really welcome to adjust. Recognizing that you're the expert of your own body. You might take your hand behind your head for those dips of elbow to elbow. And the last part of that sequence, bring the reach of your arm to the sky when you are ready. And the threading of the needle, maybe arriving on that left shoulder. And about three breaths here as well. Sitting out of this shape in the same way, feeling back into tabletop all fours for a bit of swiveling or movement through the spine. And then heading back towards Balasana, the child's form, sit bones to heel. And you might rest your elbows down onto the ground, forehead down onto the ground. And maybe for a little bit of wobbling here, so pelvis and head. And this next little movement sequence will take us forward to a tabletop form. And this is a variation of an upward facing dog, but you're really welcome to take it at your own pace. We drop the pelvis towards the ground. There's the option to lift your chin just softly with a slight Jalandhara Bandha so that you have the chin really engaged rather than open to the sky. And then pressing your way back towards your child's form, your Balasana. And then as you come forward, you might round through the upper back. Invite the pelvis to drop maybe the gaze to lift a little with that conscious activation through the throat and then pressing back towards your child's form. And the option to 
repeat that one a couple more times if you'd like to, just in your own breath, at your own pace. So we have this focus on the spine in this session today. But we all have really different spines, really different backs, and really different hips. And knowing that the aim is not to create more mobility, but rather to feel into shapes that are supportive for your body. So maybe one more of these, if you are moving with your breath, moving with your body. And then coming back towards your child's form. Walking your hands up towards your thighs, feeling into a variation of Varasana here. If you would prefer to have a pillow in between your sit bones and your heels, know that you're really welcome to collect a pillow. It's going to take a couple of circles of the wrists here. And if circles feel like a supportive variation to move energy through the wrists and the fingers, that might be where you stay, just circling and moving through that area of your body. Another option is to interlace your fingers and to press your palms away from you as you round your upper back. And then to reach your arms up to the sky, anchoring down through your sit bones as you let your shoulders shrug to your ears. And then releasing your arms all the way down to your side. Interlacing your fingers behind your lower back and rolling your shoulders towards one another. A little wiggle here or roll of the shoulders if you like. And this might then lift your chin and maybe open up through your chest with the option of folding forward with forehead towards the ground. And just a couple of breaths here. And then releasing your arms all the way down to your sides in a variation of Balasana, where the arms and shoulders are soft. And you might add in a bit of wobbling here too, side to side. And if you'd like to rest a little longer, this might be where you stay. Another option is to move towards Anahatasana, melting heart form. If you know this one already, feel free to move ahead. If you're newer to this shape, there are a couple of different variations. And if any part of this feels uncomfortable or not quite right in your body, know that you can come back towards a variation of child's form again. So some people like to work this shape with a cushion underneath the chest. So you might take a pillow or a cushion and provide a soft landing for your body. We start this one in tabletop and with your knees and your hips in a fairly straight line, we keep the pelvis as it is, but begin to walk the hands away from you. If you have wider shoulders, you're really welcome to take your hands a bit wider and to really just walk as far as feels okay in your body. We're not doing a yin practice today, so we won't be here for a number of minutes. It'll rather be closer to five breaths. So you might find a shape that you can stay in for around five breaths. This could be either the passive variation where your chin comes to the earth and your ribs drop towards the ground, or it might be the more active variation where your ribs draw in towards your spine and your forehead meets the ground. Noticing where you feel this one in your body and seeing if you can welcome your breath to move through your whole body. And then when you're ready to ease out of this one, we're gonna plug the forearms down into the ground, round the upper back and roll forward onto the belly. 
you quite like having a cushion underneath you, you're really welcome to keep it there. Otherwise, you might slide that cushion out. As the forearms come wider, the fingertips to meet and your head lands on your hands. We'll let the heels roll out so that the pelvic halves can soften here as well. And you might even wobble your hips side to side. And then when you're ready, stretching your right arm out wide to the side so that your fingers are in line horizontally with your right shoulder. Taking your left fingertips to the earth, just a little wider than your mat with your left elbow pointing up to the sky. Turning onto your right cheek and then rolling your body weight over onto your right shoulder. And again, knowing that we all have really different shoulders, so you're welcome to pulse or move, adjust in any way as you arrive here. And if you notice any sharp or localised sensation or pain, just easing your way out of the shape. After a few breaths in this one, we'll be sliding over to your opposite side. And so you might be adjusting your position on your mat and sliding your way over onto your opposite shoulder. And so it's really normal to have different sensation in different shoulders. Our bodies aren't 100% symmetrical. And so we'll always notice different feelings. And if you notice that this shoulder is significantly different to your other shoulder, just working with the experience here and making any adjustments that you need to. And then when you're ready, feeling your way back over onto your belly, any kind of shape that allows your shoulders and chest to be open and soft. And just a couple of breaths here. If resting feels supportive, know that you're really welcome to stay. The other option is to welcome a bit more energy into your legs and your toes, to start firing up through your thighs and your glutes as you take your fingertips wider than your mat with elbows to the sky and forehead to the earth. The next time that you inhale, you might like to lift your chest maybe your eyes. And as you exhale, right shoulder can dip down towards the ground. And then as you inhale, you might reach your chest. And then as you exhale, left shoulder can dip. And maybe working your way through a couple of rounds of breath, alternating shoulders, alternating sensations. knowing that you can rest at any time. And make adjustments to the shape that you're in. And the form that we'll be heading to after you've done enough for your body with that round of back bending, will be back towards your child's form or balasana. So just making your way back when you're ready. That might be the version with arms outstretched or it might be the version with your arms beside your body. And any kind of movement or wobbling that supports you here. And the next invitation from here is to roll your way up to high kneeling. Like a Mexican wave as you lift your arms to the sky, maybe your gaze and then folding your way back down towards child's form. And arms can be outstretched or by your knee. With the option to repeat that gesture a couple more times if you'd like to, 
the reaching of your torso and your arms and then the folding back down hands beside knees or right out in front and just moving at your own pace if you are choosing to repeat these spinal waves and then giving your body a little bit of integration time a little bit of rocking or swaying as you arrive in that last child's form. And the next shape from here is a downward facing dog. So you might just take your time to move towards your Adha Mukha Shavasana, your downward facing dog. And in the same way that we've been walking out the body, you might be swiveling your heels and kind of massaging yourself into place here. If you notice sensation up the backs of your legs, you might add a little bit of movement, pressing into one heel and then the other, inviting fresh blood to flow to those areas. And then as you're ready, the option to float your right heel to the sky, just as high as you'd like to take it today. Taking a bend into that knee, and exploring the sensation of openness here by moving that right knee around, swiveling the hip, and eventually stepping that foot all the way through in between your hands. We get a hand up if it needs it. Stepping the foot just slightly wider with your right toes out to a 45 degree angle and allowing your back knee to lower down towards the ground. This might be a moment where you collect a cushion or something to pop underneath your chest. And take some time just to swivel the hips forward and back here. And you might be on your hands or you might be on your forearms. And just moving back and forth, swiveling the hips. And rolling the body. And releasing any tension through the outer edges of the hips. And once you've had a bit of an explore there, as you're ready, you could take your right hand to your inner right thigh for a gentle twist. And so you're really in charge of the depth of that twist and how far you'd like to turn your body today. Seeing if you can find length from your sacrum through to the soft palate so that the top of your head yearns for the front of the room as your sacrum lengthens to your back heel. And then whenever you're ready, we'll start to step our way back to your downward facing dog. A little bit of walking out through the heels there if you like. And spreading your fingers and spreading your toes. And then it will be your left heel that can float to the sky. And a bend in that knee. Any kind of movement as you explore the relationship between your knee and your hip, your ankle and your knee. And then stepping all the way through, giving it a hand up if it needs it. Taking that foot just a little wider, left toes on a 45 degree angle as your back knee might come down towards the ground. And just that same inquiry point if you're interested on this side. So you might be rocking forward and back, or swiveling the hips, moving them around. Could be that you're on your forearms if you prefer that shape, that variation. And then after a little bit of movement, the option to take your left hand to your inner left thigh and that lengthening from sacrum to soft palate as you lean your body back in space just a little. Maybe softening your breath, or softening your gaze. And then eventually moving your way back to your downward facing dog. 
And any kind of walking out of the feet or breathing, sighing. And then as you're ready, walking your feet to the center of your mat and taking them just a little wider than hip distance. Quite a big bend in the knees as you fold forward with the option to take your hands to the backs of your legs and a bit of a shake through your head. Another option here is to interlace your hands behind the back of your head and to allow the weight of your arms to drop your chin. And then a little spinal roll to a chair pose variation where the elbows slide onto the thighs and the palms come together. And then we roll forward with hands either to the backs of the legs or the back of the head. And a couple more of those if you'd like to. Coming towards the chair form variation. And then folding forward again. Knowing that again, you're really in charge of what these shapes look like and feel like. And if you're looking for a little more mobilization, you could lift elbows all the way up knees. And something more restorative might have a lower gaze. And more anchoring here. And the next time that you come to your forward fold, you could pause if you like. And taking a few breaths here. And then eventually making your way back to your downward facing dog. And then down towards your knees. Keeping the toes tucked as you walk your hands back towards your knees and your thighs. For about five breaths here in toe stand. Just about five breaths. This might involve spreading the toes a little more. It might involve a shrug of the shoulders or a sigh. And just taking a moment. Pouring all of our awareness down into the feet. And if you like to stay in this shape longer, know that you can. If that feels like enough for your feet today, at any point you can come forward onto your hands. And some people like to tuck the feet behind them just to wake up the energy and move the blood through. Then you can hook the inside of one foot onto, or the outside, the top of one foot onto the inside of the other and sink your sit bones back towards your heels. So it's like you're crossing your arches. And a bit of wobbling here, a bit of moving. And if you cross the arches on one side, then you might do the same on the other. So you could hook the opposite foot on top and come back to sit and a bit of wobbling, a bit of moving. And then this is going to take us all the way down onto our spines. So just taking a moment to bring yourself when you're ready, right down onto your back. And that might be with the support of a bolster or a cushion under the head. It might be that there are a few other movements that you'd like to take before you finish your practice today. And so just opening up the space for you to explore anything else that your body might be calling for today. Knowing that sometimes that's stillness and other times it will be movement. Once you feel as though you've made all the shapes that you'd like to, and perhaps starting to make your way towards rest. And 
this might mean that you rearrange your body or your prop. And that you close or lower your eyes. You are lying on your back. The invitation today to allow the feet to roll out so that the pelvis can soften. And to see if there's any other movements or changes you could make. And that would allow you to be 5 to 10% more comfortable where you are. might mean softening your jaw, softening your eyes, softening your shoulders. Softening your knees, softening your feet. And perhaps starting to feel back into the sensation of your breath, moving your body. Allowing your body to absorb the resonance of your practice. And then as you feel ready, beginning to invite a little movement into fingers and toes. you like to complete your practice seated, you might take a little bit of time just to roll to one side. And to eventually bring yourself up to a seat. And perhaps with something underneath your sit bones for a little more support if you'd like. And in a gesture of self-holding, you might take your hands onto your body, really anywhere you'd like them to go. And perhaps applying about 5% pressure here. As a way of containing and supporting, grounding. And honouring your body just as it is. Honouring your mind just as it is. And honouring your heart just as it is. Thank you for joining me today for this final release 